okay, you need a couple index cards, or we're going to be making slot notes again. You can kind of add to your Cornell notes. I'm sorry, not slot notes, but Cornell notes that we did where on the left-hand side, you're writing the topic. So go ahead and write symptoms of autism, or you're writing this on the front of an index card, symptoms of autism. At any time, if I'm going too fast, pause it, and then just catch up with me, okay? All right, uh, follow along, and here we go. Symptoms of autism. How do you know if someone has autism? Well, let's look at that. One, uh, symptoms typically appear um, by ages two to three, two to three years old. There, It could be younger than that. Actually, there are some cases of diagnosing them as young as one and a half. You start to see, like, it, because what will happen typically is the language will be missing, and that that's kind of a typical um, sign. Uh, lack of eye contact, like child doesn't look at you, doesn't try to get your eye contact, doesn't seem to even want to get your attention. You talk to them or they talk and they're looking at the floor. Lack of eye contact. A typical kid will look you in the eye. A child with autism almost never will unless they've been kind of, you know, through behavior training have been, have been taught that. Um, they lack pointing. I put the little quote marks here, but that just means lack of. So lack of pointing. They don't point toward things. They're not trying to get your attention to look. Like a little kid might go, look, look, bird, bird. And they're not doing that. They're not even, you know, not pointing. So if you see a kid and they're pointing and doing that and trying to get your attention, that's good. That's very good. Um, lack of spoken language. Or they just have a word or two they say. And um, maybe they don't speak until they're three. Maybe they don't speak at all and say a word until they're four. Or in some ex more extreme cases in autism, they just, never speak like ever uh they don't understand facial expressions <clears throat> talked about this already in the last lesson but that is a sim that is a sign they do not understand facial expressions um do not understand tone of voice like sarcasm a lot of times people with autism, they're so literal that sarcasm actually just goes right over their head. Like they don't, they don't get it. Um, unfortunately in school, this means sometimes that when kids are making fun of them, they don't actually understand that kids are being cruel. And maybe they don't understand that they're being cruel. You know, like they may be really blunt and say something and actually what they said is kind of mean, but they don't really get it because they're just saying what's true. Like someone asked like, you know, does this look good on me? And and they just go, no, it doesn't. It looks awful, actually. You know, and, and it's like, uh, uh, yeah, they're just kind of being very blunt. That could, that could they don't, tone of voice, don't get it. Um, and then, of course, we already talked about this in the last lesson as well, but repetitive behaviors, spinning wheels, flipping leathers, levers over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I mean, just like going on literally. And I don't mean just like spinning a wheel for like two minutes. I mean, like it might go on for an hour or two where they're just doing the same thing over and over and over again without purpose. And they're just kind of staring at the wheel spinning as they spin it. And then um, another sign is extreme tantrums. Sometimes you don't know what, what the stimulus was that brought on the tantrum. Sometimes it's that somebody touched their head and they have, um, you know, sensory issues with people touching them and, and they just, drop and start throwing a massive tantrum in it and it lasts for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and might even include self-injurious behavior where they slam their head into a wall and hurt themselves or a floor or something so these major behaviors now by the way all made just because someone has major behaviors does not mean they have autism i'm saying that autism often um, those children have major behavior issues uh, watch this a little bit, see if hopefully the sound can come in, but I'm just going to look at signs of, and symptoms and how they diagnose students with autism. Watch this. Eye contact and pretend play. These are just a few of the ways health experts screen children for autism. It's based on the age, the things that we try to do, and it usually involves stacking blocks and pointing to pictures in a book and labeling pictures in a book, um, some pretend play, such as playing with a baby doll. And, and then we, we talk to the child. We check the eye contact. And with autism, we don't always have a lot of good eye contact. Pediatric advanced provider Sherry Campbell and her team hold autism screenings every month throughout Lee County. What's nice, though, about this screening is there are no strings attached. We don't need a doctor's order. Parents can just show up. We give them a piece of paper. 
We don't send any information to any other place, and they can decide what they want to do. The screening starts with a questionnaire for families, followed by health experts interacting and observing the child. Seeking joint attention is one of the hallmark things that we see children not doing uh, when they have autism. And seeking joint attention is like bringing you a book, bringing you a toy, and a child with autism generally won't do that. Children between. If you saw the little girl there, she is actually pointing at the book and then looking back at the woman. That's her trying to get joint attention. And that's something that you usually don't see in a child with autism. They also have them play with toys. And the reason they have them play with toys is because do they play with the toy appropriately or do they just flip it over and start spinning the wheel? And so that's, that's what that shows. Okay, cool. We're going to stop there. Uh, thank you. That's, oh, no, no, hold on. we got to go to another card. We're not stopping there. All right. Causes of autism. Sorry. <laughs> Psych. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Causes of autism right there on the left. Card four. Good. All right, awesome. Let's jump on the back side or on the right hand side if you're doing Cornell notes. All right, so first off, 100%, not 100% sure exactly what causes autism. Not 100% sure of what causes autism. However, we do have some pretty good leads um, specifically. One, there's, there's definitely some sort of genetic component uh, because if you have family members that have autism, then you're likely more likely to have autism. Or if you have a, you know, if you have a sibling with autism and then you have a child, I mean, the chance your child has autism is, is higher than just the typical twins have a high, you know, likelihood of both having autism. Uh, so it tends to run in families, tends to run in families. Um, we found that autism is a little bit more likely in older parents which means they give birth or the father is over 35 years old, specifically the father over 35. Uh, they tend to have autism a little bit higher than, than younger parents. Uh, if the child has a low birth weight, that makes it a little more likely that um, the child could end up with autism. And then lastly, uh, it's not vaccines. It's really a myth. It's not vaccines. If you look down below, there's a high as a headline there from Time Magazine. It says the vaccine autism myth started 20 years ago. It was in the late 1990s, by the way. Um, here is why it still endures, endures today. And the uh, doctor named Andrew Wakefield did a big study. Or actually, it wasn't that big of a study. That was kind of the problem with it. And um, tried to tie the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine to autism. And his ended up that his his research was put out and people started believing this. So they stopped getting their kid MMR vaccine. And, uh, but a few years later it was found that the study was false. Um, and he actually lost his doctor's license. Like Wakefield loses his license to be a, a doctor. So like totally debunked. And yet there are so many people who still believe this in America, lots of people. Um, and you see uh, the headline up above vaccines don't cause autism. Research is fraud. Um, research fraud is what spawned the idea that they do. But the thing is that on the internet, you know, bad and stupid and conspiracy theories, um, you know, last forever on the internet. And so there's always people to, uh, will, will, will believe it. And then here's one of the impacts of that is that because they don't go get the MMR measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, you can see the headline from the Washington post from 2019 deadly measles outbreak hits children in Samoa after anti-vaccine fears. So in Samoa, it's an Island chain in the Pacific. They didn't give the, a lot of people decided not to do the, uh, MMR because they thought it would cause autism. And then now all of a sudden they have a measles outbreak, which by the way, can cause really, really severe, uh, uh, conditions, including and possibly even death. So th this is, it, it gets kind of crazy. So just know vaccines do not cause autism. Thank you. All right. That's it for that card. You need to study these and do the millionaire on it. Um, so practice turning it over and saying it in your head, read it, turn it, say it, read it, turn it, say it. If you have um, the slot notes, cover them up and then try to say what's on the right. All right, cool. Thanks.